And there's was, a map of the properties in the past. <coughs> what it was was those six properties, uh, the home burned down, they couldn't rebuild. It was just not zoned for them to come back as a C3. So the C1 neighborhood business district, if it burns down, uh, they can rebuild. If a business wants to buy now because of the size of the lots, they actually now have to buy two lots to conform to the new uh, size that was put out there. So this is just a way to keep everything as it is efficient. Yes, well what it is is, is uh, if you're a homeowner and you want to go to the bank and borrow money to put in addition or do work on your house, the banks weren't loaning the money because it was in a C3 general business. It wasn't in proper zoning so now uh, we put it into a c1 to put it in the proper zoning so the homeowners over there can go to the bank and get mortgages and do all that stuff we need to buy it out yep all right any other questions for marty the print wasn't exactly clear marty could you show me on your, yeah. on your print what you were talking about these six here's jeff and tina's place okay. so you got these six okay one two three four five six All right, uh, motion to approve ordinance 19-08, rezoning. So moved. I'll support. Any other questions for our party? Sue? Mayor Board. Yeah. Councilmember Salzwedo. Yes. Councilmember Yankovic. Yes. Councilmember Chambers. Yes. Councilmember Canfield. Yes. All right, uh, IT and cybersecurity upgrade program, Steve. Good evening. Uh, Including your packet is a memo that I drafted to Mike. It's quite a lengthy memo. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I do want to spend some time highlighting uh, the major components of the memo. Uh, earlier this annual year, I think it was right at the end of fiscal year 2019, the Wall Light and Power Board uh, added a number of initiatives to our strategic plan action item list. And one of the major things that was added was the development of a business continuity disaster response plan and ultimately this plan will incorporate many many uh, things um, from scheduling outside staff coming in to help work on power lines if somebody retires or is out on disability or leaves the utility how we replace their job duties and make sure that things keep happening uh, but after kind of reviewing the risk of the organization, uh, thinking about a business continuity disaster response plan, um, staff determined that our information technology systems or our IT platforms really are probably the most critical to getting right and they're gonna be at the central part of any plan that we ultimately go forward with. And I'll get to the reasons for that in a minute, but as Michael uh, from MERS knows, I just attended the annual MERS conference uh, last month. Uh, cybersecurity is a huge threat in today's age, especially in the electric industry. Uh, the Department of Defense, the Department of Homeland Security, the American Public Power Association, and many others um, are really preaching to us electric utilities. We're all interconnected in one giant web uh, in the grid that we have to uh, do what we can to make sure that our IT platforms are cyber secure. We have SCADA systems at low light and power that with a push of a button, entire circuits could be turned off. We have generating infrastructure that is connected to the grid. We interconnect with ITC. So from low light and power's siloed perspective, um, we decided uh, at our October meeting to go forward uh, with an IT plan. The reasons for that, uh, besides the cybersecurity threat though, our IT systems directly control our cash flow nowadays. Um, all invoice <coughs> payments rely on IT infrastructure and systems. Without cash flow, uh, we'll be severely hampered and limited to what we can, uh, can do. Um, also from Light and Power's perspective, the integration of all of our energy settlements take place with the Michigan Public Power Agency on a five minute basis and that relies on IT systems. Um, we process payroll, vendor payments through IT infrastructure platforms. The majority of our work uh, we've converted to paper light systems. A lot of iPads, phones, computers, 
we don't do as much with paper as we once did. Um, as the city found out last week, emails very, very important to uh, continue communication and uh, keep things functioning. And uh, as you all know, we've recently transitioned our phone system to a VoIP system that relies on internal IT infrastructure. So as you can see, um, so much of what we do at Low Light and Power, and I'm sure it's the same way at the city, um, relies on IT platforms. So it was staff's recommendation to the board that if we're going to do a plan and do it right, we need that IT piece as bulletproof as we can. So we tasked Core Highcom and Adorio Technologies to develop a plan and roadmap tailored specifically for low light and power to meet our size and budget. Um, it was critical uh, when Core Highcom presented to the board that they designed their platform and solution in such a way that the city uh, can participate in that platform. They actually went back to the drawing board, tailored the plan so that the city can participate. And when I say the city, the police, the DPW, water, fire, city hall, really the solution they've developed is not limitless, but there's a lot of scalability in this solution such that we can add, I think, over 30 different servers to the virtual machines that we're going to be moving forward with. So highlights of the project, I gave a cost estimate uh, breakdown. Uh, with the contingency of $15,000, we estimate the project will be $195,000. Not going to go over the itemized breakdown between installation, software, hardware, etc., but that's in the memo. Uh, the system is designed to be redundant on multiple levels. Uh, first, it would we would like to eliminate single points of failure. Right now, we have individual servers dedicated to like individual applications. Case in point, Bull Light and Power is AMI metering. Last year, our uh, still in warranty Dell server failed and we weren't able to meet, read meters for two and a half weeks. If it ha had happened two and a half weeks later, it would have been over Christmas time, we would have been reading meters by hand, it would have been a real, real public relations and cash flow nightmare. Um, with the solution that is being designed, there's three virtualized machines at three different locations, City Hall, uh, Low Light and Power's office, and our Chatham Energy Center facility that if one of the applications, like an outage management system, your normal data server were to go down, uh, the other two host sites would take over within a maximum of 10 minutes and you wouldn't experience any longer than 10 minutes downtime. So incredible reliability in terms of single point of failure. We also wanted to incorporate physical security. It's no secret. Um, the City Hall building and the Low Light Power Office, uh, highly trafficked facilities accessible to the public, meetings take place here, um, so there's some risk with the public. We also have vendors and contractors coming into these sites. Um, low Light Power, you know, is close to the river, City Hall, um, I'm not sure the exact floodplain, but you know, you have physical uh, security concerns. Um, really having this system at three different sites eliminates those concerns. And then finally, uh, cybersecurity concerns. Um, this system's designed in such a way that backups will take place on a separate server other than the host three servers and will be run by an operating system called Linux, which is different than Microsoft. Linux operating system isn't near as popular Cybersecurity attacks, for the most part, are not designed to attack, attack Linux type systems. And we'll have one single point of connection between this backup Linux system and the other three servers. Uh, that Linux system can also be backed up to the cloud as well as with physical hard drives. So from a cyber perspective, we're much, much more secure than we are today. Um, other advantages of this system, uh, Scalability, we can add more RAM, data <coughs> on the fly as needed. Uh, IT infrastructure will all, all, always need to be replaced, but they estimate six to seven year useful life for this investment. Um, there is a reoccurring cost of just over $4,000, but really it's a one-time cost that'll take us 
for the next six or seven years. I know the $195,000 is a big price point, but I asked Core Highcom to uh, give a, an estimate of what the city's utilization of the system would be compared to low light powers, and they estimate the city would use one third of the system. Um, so the $195,000 cost of the project uh, divided by three, the city's cost would be reduced by 67% for only $65,000. Um, ultimately, I think uh, it would be great if the city could find a way to join low light and power on the project now. It would make it a little bit cheaper from an installation standpoint because they're going to be doing everything here right now. Um, from an exposure standpoint, I think that's probably the greatest benefit. Uh, there's a lot of ransomware attacks in this country just earlier in the last quarter. I think there's two dozen Texas towns, uh, small government towns that were attacked in a coordinated attack. Um, typically ransomware payments are going to be far more than the $65,000 investment that the city would have to make. So one ransomware attack, you, know, you could take those funds and already pay for this entire project. So not trying to promote it out of fear, uh, but I do think it is smart to be um, cautiously afraid. Is the reality? Is the Linux element of it what would help boost our security against the ransomware uh, attacks? It is. Okay. Yes. Because it's two different operating systems, so they'd have to be doing two different things at once. Yeah, and that Linux would be running on like a, a fourth backup server, and that backup server is actually being taken offline daily, and it's only on and connected when it's backing up. And that backup server is also being backed up by like physical hardware, and it's being backed up to the cloud. So worst case scenario, some hacker genius says I'm going to shut you down and we go okay because we're all backed up is, am I oversimplifying it but is that kind of what the goal is we would have access to restore our data uh, and it wouldn't be encrypted or we wouldn't have to pay for them to take back our data we could start downloading that data off this backup hard drive, hard drive or the cloud so if the scenario that happened in Texas happened to us we, we wouldn't have to pay the go Okay. Chief, you. That scenario that you're talking about actually happened in the city of Kentwood last spring. And when I was at a meeting, their chief and I was still opening the emails, attachments from Kentwood because they had been hacked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were out for 30 days. Steve, uh -huh. I'm looking at, at the parts list here, and I can see you're doing three of the Dow EMC Pro Edge 740s. Yeah, you have three of those, but you only have two of the UPSs because you already have UPSs in place. You don't need to buy the additional two. Believe so, yes. That's that part of it. Yes. And I see a lot of your existing switches are just the one gig. So as you move forward, change out your, your existing network switches, or you go to a 10 gig then? Oh boy, you're getting out of my wheelhouse, <laughs> Jim. I'm, I'm just looking at the parcels. Oh, so 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 yeah. 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 I, I, I get one thing, and then the other one on, on your. Uh, Going to the cloud, are you looking at as your AWS, or you really haven't even thought about what what ones to look at yet? Haven't about thought about storage. that. It will have the ability, but we haven't thought about that. Okay. Well, Jim took all my questions, so I. <laughs> <laughs> I do know the network will be able to operate at 10 gigabits. And yeah, that it makes a lot of sense, especially if you're looking at any 30 machines down the road, and if the city jumps on it, who else knows what what that could be? So it looks like it's really robust. Well Somebody did a good job putting this together. Jordan Hickel at Core Icom, uh, he's probably in his 20s, spent a lot of time developing this plan. He's very, very intelligent. Um, now they charge to come to meetings like this. I told them yeah. I'd give my first crack at it, and <laughs> there were still uh, additional questions or concerns. The project's going forward no matter what. Right now, the hardware's been ordered. It won't be here until <coughs> mid to late December. If you'd prefer to have Core Icom actually here to start answering some of the more technical components of how the system operates or what VMware is, no, I, I'd be happy to SQL have them come. SQL is a lot higher secure than the normal two. What's well, that? Your SQL versions of things, so much more secure too. Yep. I've always I know, you, I knew I'd get questions from you being in the security business. I can't 
question when we found Steve's crypt and I didn't ask that question. That was amazing. Linux is safer though, right? Because isn't most of the stuff that's designed for broad scale stuff designed to attack Microsoft because it's so much more common? Yes, that's my understanding. Now, a lot of the security of like the big manufacturers they use the Linux for for their VMS. And I'm assuming Kentwood had nothing even close to this in place. I believe they do now. <laughs> <laughs> 30 days. Uh, so my question, Mike, is is, is do we do we have the funding to yeah. look at this? Yes. Yes. So this is what I wanted this is what I wanted to talk to you about. So this is a would be a sixty five thousand um, dollar expense to, to the city, which our data processing fund can handle. However, what I would what I would do, I've talked to Steve about this and they're willing to allow this is we would spread the payment over three fiscal cycles. So we pay like the first twenty one thousand five hundred mm -hmm. right now. And then um, in the next two years just make payments from the to a little light of power through the data processing fund. We can we can we can budget for those. <coughs> but it would lock, in, in the worst case scenario is we just have to we charge all the different accounts for data processing, we might just have to charge them a little bit more, and maybe we can even pay it off a year faster. But I, I do have, I've been able to work it out with Steve to be able to to, to do this. I, I think this. Once I saw this, I think this is very important. I've been to enough training seminars in the last year on this subject, and it, to me, we we got to do this. It's, what do we cut out of our budget if it's budget a hundred thousand and this is thirty one? What are we going to give up in that hundred thousand dollars? As an example, I don't know what that. Dead budget is well. We have about we have a fund balance right now of about fifty four thousand um, dollars in that account. That's that's if we spend every dollar in the budget this year. We have actually better better way to explain it. On July on July one of this year, we have fifty four thousand dollars. We by the time our contribution comes in, we have about twenty thousand dollars this year unbudgeted. So it gives us. Seventy thousand. I mean, we could technically pay it right all the way off in a year. My only concern with that is, is there's always things that come up with IT. Three years right. We got free money from Lake Powell. Let's take it. Right. <laughs> What's the interest rate? <laughs> Haven't worked that far out yet. <laughs> I didn't hear anything about an interest rate. I mean, is, how much do we stand to lose if we don't do it and then we get hit? That's the a lot more money. Yeah. A lot of money. Yeah, one email. Yep. No, it is important, but we also, I, I think it's important to stay within our budget that we've already set because, you know, it's, it's, with our road situation, what it is, we just can't go, oh, yeah, here's, go ahead, take 20 from here. But if we've already got it in our budget that we can cover this, then it's a slam dunk, I think, a no brainer. And it, this is the cheapest force to get into it, correct? Right now, before the installation, everything begins. Yes, it is. They're going to be on site physically here. There's travel time. They're going to be virtualizing, converting all of our uh, programs to these machines. It's cheaper than so saying in a year we missed the boat. We probably should get on board. Right. So we could save ten percent or fifteen percent, probably. Doing it on the labor. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure the exact amount. From that side of the river to here is on you. Because <laughs> they're already coming here. Well, they. They're gonna. Be, they just wouldn't have to do all the additional work configuring their stuff at City Hall. I mean, they're gonna have to be here setting up a server no matter what. Yeah, it's already budgeted and we've got it and it, we can do it. And they're willing to take it over a time frame period. I think that's a good thing and it gets us in a much much better place, a lot safer place. Look at this. We lost the email for three days. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, in the yeah. world, I can't imagine. So, if something bigger happens, I'll make the recommended motion that the city participate in this project. And I'll support. Any other questions for Steve? Jim, you want to give one more time for? Ah, uh, no. I I looked through a lot of it. There's a couple questions, but we have, we have to bring in an expert to cost us more. You money. are our expert. So we brought you in. <laughs> All right, Sue. So. Councilmember Salzweil. Yes. Councilmember Yankovic. Yes. Councilmember Chambers. Yes. Councilmember Canfield. Yes. Mayor <coughs> board. Yes. Thanks, Steve. Welcome, thank you. Uh, Board and Commission reports. Cliff. Uh, look Fund emptied its checkbook. Um, we won't be meeting until next fall. 
we bought some signs for Flat River Outreach Ministry, everything they asked for. We gave a partial grant, or we, we didn't have enough money to give everything to Lowell Arts and to the city, but we gave partial to Lowell Arts for uh, second story flooring, and we're, uh, the Look Fund is also helping out with the expenses at the Ware Road dump site. Cool. Jim. Uh, December 5th is approaching fast for the LCD fund for our first meeting, and right after that, we'll probably be looking for people that want to get a donation. So, looking forward to that. Very good. Great. Uh, the Lowell Area Recreational Authority met on Wednesday. Um, Dave had some disappointing news for us a little bit. Dave, I don't know if you want to step up and, and share the news. The, the railroad uh, did not approve our crossing underneath. Correct. The current plan is to, uh, after we, we get to the fairgrounds, to have a bridge go over the Flat River and go across the, uh, what we call the Moose Rogers property and go under the railroad trestle. That's always been the plan. That's where the North Country Trail goes. Uh, after a lengthy and costly review from the railroad, uh, they indicated they didn't feel that it was safe uh, for a lot of reasons. In particular, they may have to replace that trestle at some point. Uh, they're concerned about people uh, getting off the trail and accessing the tracks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, in working with the board, we're looking at other options of going over the tracks uh, and that grade crossing. So, um, we're not giving up yet, but we're looking at other options. Right, and we're meeting with uh, King Milling. It affects their rail cars and stuff a little bit. And uh, Mark Anderson from Lowell Township and I are going to meet with the, the Doyles <coughs> on Monday Tuesday next week. So. They were uh, more optimistic than I thought they would be about it because it's going to complicate their operations a little bit. But I think they recognize how important this is to the community. So we're going to meet with them next week and see if we can get their support before we pitch the railroad on the new at grade crossing. Very good. Mike. Uh, Planning Commission was getting this uh, C3 to the C1. Um, we, did, we worked on that. And then Thursday at uh, Light Power last week, uh, they did, the board uh, voted to go tobacco free. Uh, no tobacco anywhere. Not while they're on a job site, they're digging a ditch way out in the middle of nowhere. No tobacco, period. That'll take effect January 1st. Correct, Perry? Correct. And that's it. Very good. Uh, Fire authority was canceled for this month, and vision is tomorrow. I haven't had anything yet. Uh, questions, concerns on the monthly reports? Just a question, Mr. Mayor. Since we approved uh, Lou Bender, um, does that give us the two-thirds majority on everything? So Lou's going to meet with the fire authority? Yep. And then that study is going to go ahead? Yeah, we're working on dates right now. Um, the most responsible way to do it is to bring him in for fire authority while he's already coming for light and power and for council. Then that travel gets split up three ways instead of paying him to come three separate times. So uh, Mike Dine and Steve have been talking with him about dates and um, as soon as we get one that works for all three of us, we'll get Lou in here for, I think right now we're looking at the 23rd for the fire authority and the 30th for right. our light and power, and that's January, sorry, January 30th. Um, and then if that doesn't work, we're talking about just interchanging the night meetings between fire authority and city council. So we go first and then they go, but it's still all be the same visit, so we'll save a ton of paying for flights. And I think Lou said he usually books mid-December for his January conferences, so we got another month or so before we got to give him a hard yes, but he has the dates all reserved for us. We just got to logistically figure out who goes when. <laughs> Uh, city manager's report. Sure. First off, congratulations to the three winners of the election. Um, looking forward to continuing to work with you. Um, Christmas Lowell was, through Lowell, was very successful. Um, it was so successful that on Saturday afternoon when traffic was backed up through town, I went around town to go to my house. <laughs> downtown. I don't normally do that. But it was, uh, I walked through town. There were a lot of people here, at least on, I know on Friday and Saturday. Um, also, I want to thank the Look uh, uh, Committee 
Um, they did provide the city uh, eighteen thousand six hundred thirty-five dollars for assisting us with Blair, Blair Road, um, which I believe we were, we're close to about seventy-seven thousand dollars in committed expenditures at this point. Um, so I do I do appreciate their help with that, and uh, that's all I have. All right, uh, appointments. One, oh, there's a ton of them. Uh, Perry Lara, mm -hmm. consensus on Perry. Mm -hmm. we, need, mm -hmm. we need three. You guys can both. He didn't sit like this tonight. He's in the back here. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so that one, Susie, we can take off. <coughs> and uh, I'll get with Susie this week, and we'll start going through all the currently servings. The only resign still is that construction board of appeals, but I don't think we have any applications for that, right? No. So if everybody who's currently serving wants to, I'll bring it back to you guys at the next meeting and trim this list up a little bit. Okay. Good? Council comments, Mr. Canfield. Uh, it was real interesting tonight to hear from the library all the cutting edge advances that they're making in pilot projects that come here out of the whole county they chose, Lowell. So exciting to hear all the advances that you guys are doing and new things you're bringing to us. And, already been said a dozen times, but Christmas through Lowell was really well done by the chamber and all the merchants, so great thing for Lowell. Mark. I'd like to thank everybody for voting me back in. Uh, we started some, well, I started something here two and a half years ago, and I want to see it through, so thank you for that. There's a couple people I'd like to thank. I had helpers in my store over the weekend. Uh, our mayor was gracious enough to greet people at the front door, hand out candy canes, and sign the little flyers that everybody goes around with. I got a new cash register runner. Chief was gracious enough <laughs> to run my cash register for me for a while. I wouldn't let Mike because he's a politician and he's crooked, so I decided <laughs> Chief was good. Um, and thanks, guys, for helping out. It was it's it's an it's an amazing thing when the people come in. Chief knows they stand there in line. They're not in a hurry. They're patient and they're just they're just happy to be there. And it was good to see town and know we're not doing this once a month. I I said four times a month. There's four weekends a month. Also, I stole the candy canes. You can't do nothing about it. I know he did. <coughs> Cliff. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> Jill. Uh, again, uh, the traffic and was, was congested. It took a while to get through town. It doesn't matter if you had cones every 10 feet. People just went across the street wherever they wanted to go. When one crossed, it, they, they all crossed. So I'm just glad that nobody got hit or hurt over the weekend because uh, there were some impatient drivers trying to get just through town. But uh, over and all, congratulations to Mike and Marty for being uh, reelected. And Cliff. And Cliff, that's right, Cliff. What, you work for TV8? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Fox. I'm Fox all the way. <laughs> So that's it. All right. Uh, I want to thank everybody for voting for us, too. I think this council right now, as it sits, is really, really good. And I'm looking forward to spending some more time causing trouble. Uh, I had a blast at Christmas through Lowell. Uh, when I offered to come down to help Marty and Lori, they told me there was going to be a lot of people, but I had no idea. So, I mean, it was, it was a ton of fun. And I would like to do it every weekend. Regardless, that's a conversation I'll have with Liz. Uh, all right, uh, motion to go into closed session to discuss this year's upcoming labor negotiations. I'll make that motion go into closed session. I'll support. All right. So, Councilmember Yankovic? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. Councilmember Canfield? Yes. Mayor DeVore? Yes. Councilmember Salisbury? Yes. All right, Chief Lacassonne? 